Hello, I've been using Unreal Engine as my primary game engine for several years to create a range of games and projects. I love Unreal Engine. It's great, although it's not perfect. So in this video, I'd like to talk about the ups and downs of using it based on my experience having used it for 100 plus hours. I can't quite remember the first time I opened Unreal Engine. It was back when it was Unreal Engine 4, but I vividly remember I downloaded it because I wanted to create my first game, a third person game where you played as a monkey and you only had one minute to complete each level. And starting with Unreal made this very easy. Out of the box, the first thing I liked was that Unreal Engine came with these mini game templates, like the third person template, which would give you a fully functional third person character in seconds. With a few changes to this basic template, I was able to replace the default character with my own monkey model, and it felt like magic. After a couple of tutorials, I was able to make a basic project. It gave me a good running start. Even in the most recent version of Unreal Engine, it comes with a bunch of new updated templates, which I think are super helpful for beginners. There's a first person one, there's a horror one, there's a racing one, and more. That being said, people often mention that Unreal Engine has a significant learning curve when you first start. You immediately hit with a bunch of different panels and it can be overwhelming. But to be fair, isn't that the case with any other powerful professional tool? I kind of felt the same way when I first opened Blender. Although, after playing around and following some tutorials, you'll pick up the basics quickly. To help with this, I've created a completely free Unreal Engine beginner course that covers all of the fundamentals that I think you need to know when you're first getting started. You can find a link to that free course in the video description. When working with Unreal Engine, stay organized. And honestly, this is a good rule for just about anything in life. I used to be the person who would have a very messy Windows desktop with icons and folders all over my desktop with no structure. I brought the same chaotic energy into my Unreal Engine projects when I first started. And let me tell you, it will come back to haunt you. Name your blueprints appropriately, use folders, and you should seriously consider using naming conventions. For example, if you create a material, it's recommended to prefix it with M underscore. I'll leave a link in the description of this video where you can find all of the official naming conventions for how you're meant to name assets in Unreal Engine. You don't need to follow the official naming conventions exactly, but I recommend naming your assets in a clear and consistent way. You can also use filters in the content drawer to help you find specific assets you're looking for, and you can filter by type. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can even color code your folders. I personally don't do this, but it's another nice way to stay organized. That little bit of effort that you put into staying organized at the start will make a huge difference down the line when you're deep into a project and you're trying to find something quickly. Unreal Engine uses a system called Blueprints, which is a visual scripting language. This is a huge part of what makes the engine so accessible. You can code pretty much anything with Blueprints alone. I even created a full game using Blueprints, and I'm not alone. Many developers have also done the same thing. You can build AI, complex player abilities, and more just by connecting nodes together. It essentially is a powerful flowchart that compiles and runs your game, and debugging in Blueprints is very manageable. You can add breakpoints to specific nodes in your Blueprints, and when your game hits them during runtime, it will pause. This allows you to inspect all of the data and logic at that exact moment whilst your game is running, making it much easier to analyze and pinpoint any potential issues. I think it's a great way to get into game coding. Although there are so many different nodes, that I do think it can take a bit of time to get used to learning how everything can work. A huge reason people choose Unreal Engine is for the visuals. I'm no 3D artist, but even by just using marketplace assets, you can create something that looks pretty good with the minimal amount of effort. And you can have this running relatively well. Unreal Engine 5 comes with two new powerful features that help you do this. Nanite which is the engine's virtualized geometry system. This allows game developers to import high quality assets and have them still run smoothly and efficiently in their game. It basically replaces LODs. If you don't know, LODs stand for level of detail. Normally in a game, you'll make a model and it'll have multiple LODs. 
And if, say, the player character was close to a model in your game, you'd show the highest LOD of that model. And as the player moves further and further away from that model, you would replace it with a lower LOD version of that model. And at the lower LOD, that model would look worse, although since the player character is much further away from that model, they would not really notice it, and it would help increase the performance of your game. Nanite replaces that system. You can automatically import high quality models, and Nanite will automatically handle the level of detail in real time. It will intelligently stream and display the detail you can actually see. It's automatically turned on by default when you import a model with it, although you can easily turn this off if you want to not have it and just use the old LOD system. And then there's Lumen. This is a fully dynamic global illumination and reflection system. It basically allows you to have realistic lighting in real time in your game. Now, a crucial caveat. Just because Unreal Engine does make it easier to design nicer looking levels doesn't automatically make you an artist. I'd say the engine provides really good tools, although you still need to learn how to use them. If you just throw together a bunch of different assets that don't look like they belong together, it will still end up looking weird and out of place. But I do think Unreal Engine does help make your games look nicer if you were trying to make a pretty game. And Unreal Engine isn't just limited to making your games look realistic and nice. You can make it so your game has distinctive art styles. There are many Unreal Engine developers who have created like a PS1 looking art style game directly inside of Unreal Engine. So you're not limited to just one particular 3D style. You can change it up and create tools which make your game look completely different. All right, let's talk about creating 2D games in Unreal Engine. I've seen people online say, you can create 2D games in Unreal Engine, although it's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Unreal Engine has an internal system called Paper 2D, which can be used to create 2D games. In fact, in Unreal Engine version 4, there used to be an official 2D template, although when they updated to Unreal Engine 5, they removed it, which was pretty disappointing, because some of the first games I actually created were with the 2D template. There's even this fantastic plugin called Paper ZD, which provides much better support for 2D animations and workflows in Unreal Engine. And I've personally used it and even created some tutorials with it. And this tool basically allows you to create 2D animation systems for your character. You can create classic side-scroller 2D games or even top-down 2D games with this plugin. If you are creating a 2D game in Unreal Engine, I highly recommend that you check out the Paper ZD plugin and it's completely free, which is great. And if you want to, you don't entirely have to create a strictly 2D game in Unreal Engine. You could even create a 2.5D game in Unreal Engine and you can leverage Unreal Engine's incredible lighting and rendering to create 2D HD style games. Games like Octopath Traveler did this. So it is entirely possible to create 2D games and because you can use blueprints to code everything, I still do like creating 2D games in Unreal Engine. So whilst it may not be your first choice to create a pure 2D game in, you can absolutely do it. Next, let's go over Unreal Engine's audio system. I've personally used sound cues. These are a node-based graph system where you can assemble and modify sounds directly in the engine. For example, in the sound cue graph, you can add this modulator node. This will randomly adjust the pitch and volume of a sound every time it plays. This can be very helpful for creating certain sounds like footsteps, gunshots, and sword slashes. It can make them sound slightly different each time they're played, which can prevent sound from feeling too repetitive in your game. Personally, I found the default sound cue system to be simple and fine enough for most of my needs. Although there is also another audio system in Unreal Engine called Metasounds, I've personally not used this, although if you have, let me know how you think it compares with the default sound cue system. I've just never switched as I found I've been able to do everything I want to do with sounds in the default sound cue system. Next, let's talk about the documentation. A lot of people feel the documentation is not good enough. It doesn't contain enough information or practical examples. You hear this as a common complaint amongst many game engines. I personally find the documentation okay. I do think if you are looking for something specific, it can be helpful. Although I think it depends the area you're looking at. 
Although what I do think can be more helpful are the Unreal Engine forms. I remember when I was starting off, if I did have a problem, I'd normally probably just Google it and normally there'd be an answer on the Unreal Engine forms. And if you want to, you can even post your own questions on the Unreal Engine forms if you're stuck. But normally I just try and look for an answer because the chances are if you have a problem, Hopefully someone else has probably already encountered that problem, so the answer is probably online somewhere. Also, if you can't find the answer on a form, hopefully you can find it on a YouTube video. There are many Unreal Engine tutorials online, and I think the space is growing, so hopefully you'll be able to find an answer. And also, there is a potential game changer on the horizon. I've seen that in Unreal Engine version 5.7, there's going to be a built-in AI assistant. Now, I'm not really a coder, although I do have some experience coding my own websites and things. And there's this tool called GitHub Copilot. It will basically live inside your project and it can analyze all aspects of it. You can even ask it questions and it can even generate code inside of your project. From what I've seen, the Unreal Engine version 5.7 assistant can't generate code inside your project, although it seems you can ask it questions about your project. And I also was recently allowed early access to this other AI tool called Aura, which again lives in your Unreal Engine project. And if say you were stuck, it could analyze your whole project and then you could ask it questions. So in the future, you may even be able to get more customized, personalized support by AI. Although AI can hallucinate and be a bit strange. Although I do think it could be potentially very helpful. Next, let's talk about exporting. Now, I personally only really had to export on Windows, and that process was relatively simple. I think I just needed to install Visual Studios and a couple of modules from it, and then I was able to export to Windows. However, I remember years ago, I tried exporting to Android, and it was a headache. I can't even remember what I had to do, but I remember I did not enjoy that process. In the end, I did get it to work, although it was not as simple as just clicking a button and exporting it. I had to install and have a bunch of different settings in my Unreal Engine project, although it is possible. And I remember back in Unreal Engine 4, you could upload like web versions of your project online. I know Unity allows you to do this, but in Unreal Engine 5, you can't really do this. You can if you have like a pixel streaming site, but that's a whole other process. You can't just like, upload a web version of your project straight out of the box. And then exporting to consoles, I think Unreal Engine has like agreements with Nintendo, Xbox and PlayStation. And once you're like approved in their program, you'll be given the SDK to export to those platforms. And by following the documentation, you should be able to do that. I've heard it's not too bad. Okay, so I've talked about how Unreal Engine has been pretty good and has some nice features. But let's talk about the negatives. So, first of all, people say Unreal Engine is massive. This can lead to a steep learning curve. It can feel bloated and even empty projects can be pretty big. So if you are making a small project or a mobile game, it can be overkill because your project may be much larger than it needs to be. Then I mentioned this slightly earlier. Some areas of the engine do feel neglected it doesn't really feel like there's much support for 2D games. The best support for 2D games comes from an external plugin, not from Unreal Engine directly themselves. And then the biggest criticism I've heard recently is that Unreal Engine is killing games and that Unreal Engine games are just poorly optimized this. You can see this in the comments for every major release. So recently Borderlands 4 released and that was built with Unreal Engine 5 and it was unoptimized causing crashes and so on. But here's the crucial thing to understand. This is more on the developer than the tool. There have been many games which have been built with Unreal Engine 5 which are optimized, like Marvel Rivals and Claire Expedition 33. The way to think of it is, you can give two artists the exact same set of paints and brushes. A master artist will create a masterpiece, whilst a terrible artist will still create a terrible art piece. The tools are the same, the outcome depends on the skill of the user. So yes, Unreal Engine can be used to create a bunch of poorly optimized games, but it also can be used to create games which are optimized. I think the engine is a tool, not a scapegoat. 
So, conclusion. After overspending 100 hours in Unreal Engine, would I recommend it? Yes, and I'm probably going to spend another 100 hours in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 5 is a powerhouse, with each update it's getting more tools and features. I do think at the start it does take some getting used to, and you should be organized. Although if you want to create games, I would recommend using Unreal Engine. And don't forget to check out my free Unreal Engine beginner course or my Unreal Engine roadmap if you're serious about learning Unreal Engine. You can find links to those in the description of the video. With that said, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.